Hello, and welcome to a lecture on amplifier design, noise figure, and VSWR. I'm Steve Ellingson. Here's an overview of this lecture. Previously, we considered the noise figure of perfectly matched devices. Now we consider the noise figure of active two ports, which may not be perfectly matched, in particular transistor amplifiers. Because recall, our method for designing for gain and stability involved selectively mismatching the inputs and outputs of the two ports representing the transistors. So now when we consider the noise figure of completed amplifiers, we must have a way of accounting for this mismatch. First I'll talk about noise figure characterization of active mismatched two ports. I'll talk briefly about the process of noise figure measurement, uh, in particular the Y-factor method. Uh, this is not discussed in the book, but I think it's kind of useful to see this because it gives you some context as to why we characterize transistors the way we do. I'll show you how to compute the noise figure of an amplifier, now accounting for these mismatches. We'll do an example. I'll show you how to design a transistor amplifier for minimum noise figure. I'll talk about the technique of noise figure circles, which are useful when you need to do a design in which noise figure is one of the things that you're trading off with respect to other parameters such as gain and stability. I'll show you an example of exactly that trade-off. And Then finally we'll talk about VSWR considerations because what we're going to find is that as we work through this process of trading off noise figure performance for gain and stability that VSWR must also be considered and normally we have constraints on how bad the VSWR can be so we need to be able to calculate that and then account for that in the trade-off. So I'll show you an example of that. And then finally I'll summarize what we've talked about in this lecture. Okay noise figure characterization. So let's go back to our basic uh, top level picture of how amplifiers work. We have an input with a specified impedance, often but not always 50 ohms. We have an output with a specified impedance, often but not always 50 ohms. An input matching network, an output matching network, and then an active two port, which is typically characterized in terms of its S parameters. And then in a previous lecture, we talked about noise figure. And uh, noise figure was defined as the ratio of the input signal noise ratio to the output signal noise ratio where here obviously the input signal noise ratio is computed at the very input of this structure and the output signal noise ratio is computed at the output of this structure. Now the first thing to realize is that if the OMN is lossless, which will be the case if we have ideal capacitors, ideal inductors, ideal uh, stub matches, then the signal noise ratio that we realize here will be the same as the signal noise ratio we realize here. Right? If there's no loss here, then there's no degradation of signal and noise ratio, and therefore the OMN does not really need to be considered. Now, in practice, that's not exactly true. The OMN will always have some loss. There will always be some signal and noise ratio degradation there. But for the purposes of our analysis, we can make that uh, assumption. And in fact, in many practical cases, it's safe to assume that. Again, because we normally use capacitors, inductors, and transmission line matching structures, which have very, very low loss in this particular application. So then the noise figure can be computed as the ratio of the signal noise ratio here to the signal noise ratio here. And this simplifies things because we don't have to consider the output matching network. Said differently, we can say that the load reflection coefficient all right, gamma sub L does not affect the noise figure, again under this assumption that the uh, output matching network is lossless. There are a number of ways to measure noise figure, uh, but a pretty good uh, way of thinking about how this works is shown here. In general, what I do is I have a noise generator, and this arrow here indicates that it is a variable noise generator. That is, I can generate different amounts of T sub in. In other words, I can make the power spectral density of the noise output from the noise generator variable. And then the output, I have a power meter. And the power meter measures whatever power spectral density emerges from the output of the two port. 
I've specified impedance at the input, which the noise generator should respect. And I have a specified impedance at the output, which the power meter should respect. And typically, I will still have the OMN here, but it's not going to matter. So I'm not going to show it. The only purpose of having the OMN here would be to achieve the specified impedance, which the power meter is expecting. And then, of course, everything depends on gamma sub s, that is the source reflection coefficient, the equivalent input referred noise temperature of the active two port, and its gain. So the way you can measure noise figure in this architecture is by a technique known as the Y factor method, which goes basically like this. First, you set the noise generator to produce a certain amount of noise, KTN1, which then results in an output noise measurement, power spectral density, KT measured 1. And we can calculate what that is theoretically. All right, that should be the input noise power spectral density times some factor, which we're going to call A. A is simply whatever uh, power resulted after we went through the uh, IMN. And then we have the additive effect of the internal noise, represented by the equivalent noise temperature T sub EQ, and then the gain of the two port. And I can expand this out as follows. Then I can make a second measurement. And in the second measurement, I'll identify that as KT sub N2. It's just a different uh, output noise power level from the noise generator. And that results in a different measured output noise, KT measured 2. And the rest of the uh, theoretical calculation is the same. And I can expand that out as shown here. So I want to point out here that I have two unknowns and two equations. All right. One unknown, at least at the moment, is this factor A. And then I also, of course, do not know TEQ. But I have two equations and two unknowns, so I can arrange this as a set of linear simultaneous equations, uh, as I've got here. I know G. I know T sub N1, because that's what the noise generator is applying. And I can call this one constant. And then I have um, a factor A, and that's an unknown. I have G, which is known, T sub EQ, which is unknown. Right? So now I have uh, a linear equation, and then a second linear equation for the second measurement. And I can solve these for both A and TEQ, but I'm really only interested in TEQ, because that's the thing that will tell me the noise figure. In this calculation, A is simply a nuisance factor. I have to count for it, but I'm really not interested in what it is. And then, of course, to get noise figure, I calculate uh, 1 plus TEQ over T naught, where recall T naught is the reference temperature. Normally, we're going to follow the IEEE convention and say it's a arbitrarily set temperature of 290K. But again, you should be careful to know what it is in your particular application. So now when I characterize active two ports, I can do it in terms of this measurement that I just described. So it's quite common to hook up a transistor uh, in a structure such as this, where I have an input matching network. I'll say more about that in just a moment. And then a noise figure meter. And of course, I also have an output matching network here, which is really there only to uh, set the specified impedance as has no effect on the noise figure uh, calculation. This noise figure meter is a commonly available piece of benchtop equipment. It typically uses the Y factor method I just showed you, although there are some other methods and enhancements of this that may be in effect. But in general, the noise figure meter is generating this test signal and then reading the output power spectral density and then using those measurements to determine the noise figure. Now, the question here is how do I characterize the active two port, that is my transistor? The way I do that is to make variable the input matching network. And the purpose in modifying the input matching network is so that I make variable the source reflection coefficient. And the idea here is to make measurements while modifying that source reflection coefficient. Eventually, what will happen is I will find a source reflection coefficient which minimizes the noise figure. So what we say here is that this quantity F sub min, the minimum noise figure that I measure, 
is achieved for some value of the source reflection coefficient, and I'll call that gamma sub opt for optimum. So said differently, the way I'm going to characterize this transistor is to vary the input matching network, thereby varying gamma sub s. I'm going to figure out which value of gamma s minimizes the noise figure. At that point, I know that noise figure, the minimum one, is f sub min, and I achieve it at a source reflection coefficient of gamma sub opt. Now that's only for one state. In other words, I know one condition. I know that gamma sub opt yields the minimum noise figure, and I know those two numbers. What about all other values of source reflection coefficient? Well, it turns out that you can calculate that from just those parameters, f sub min and gamma sub opt. All other values of noise figure as a function of gamma sub s are given by this equation. So what you do is you calculate this expression for the particular value of gamma sub s that you actually have. And one other thing, the normalized noise resistance. Now this is a, another parameter of the active two port, which we have not discussed how to calculate, but it's pretty straightforward to do. It's just not really relevant to what we want to do going forward. So I'll just simply say that this is another parameter which characterizes the two port. And these three things are commonly given in data sheets for RF transistors, just as S parameters are. So it's very common to see in a data sheet a table of S parameters and then also a table or a list of these values, gamma sub opt, f sub min, and r sub n for different bias conditions. In any event, uh, r sub n is normalized load resistance. It's a resistance divided by the reference impedance, and the reference impedance is the same one we're using for the s parameters. So you can see there's a close connection here between this method for calculating noise figure and s parameters. They all have to be using the same reference impedance.